All right, so what I'd like you to do is uh, you can begin by just uh, adjusting yourself, getting yourself ready for 15 minutes or so of uh, just taking a journey inside. And you can begin by taking in a few deep, relaxing breaths, shifting around, getting yourself comfortable, getting yourself oriented now to enter into internal experience for a while, just letting that external experience float off for a moment, knowing you can come back to it later so that you can really enjoy the balance between conscious awareness and unconscious awareness. Let each breath relax you. Let your thoughts run loose for a while until they tire themselves out. And then, little by little, they can slow, becoming very slow, so that more and more of your mental energy can be spent on learning at the deepest levels within yourself of the experience of comfort about that experience of being so distant from all the usual focal points of your awareness so that you really can know deeply all that inner ter terrain, your inner landscape, can be traveled comfortably looking at this natural formation and that natural formation, the feelings and thoughts, the historical markers, your curiosity, and a very deep recognition of inner capabilities, perhaps buried, now able to be dusted off, brought out of the dirt, refreshed, and put into place. And it's interesting to observe the evolution, what the experience of development is like, to see a newly born baby. And no one really knows whether the baby thinks or what the baby thinks. And to watch an infant discover its own fingers, its own toes, to see the amused look on an infant's face when it discovers that it can make a finger wiggle at will. And little by little, that infant learns. This is my body. And it is separate and distinct from any other part of the world, from all other people and places and things. Each square inch of your skin is a boundary between your inner world and the outer world. And it really is not possible for you to jump out of your own skin. You are self-contained. And it's interesting that there are some people who don't have a home in which to live, who don't choose a home in which to live, who believe that the sky is their roof and the earth is their home. And then there are others who mark off huge territories, acres of land. They clearly mark that it is theirs. And each wall, 
keeps something in and keeps something out. And there are walls of stone, walls of wood, steel reinforced walls. And there are walls, there are the type of walls that you can build for yourself deliberately and happily that are permeable walls, the kind that can selectively let things in and let things out. And it's that kind of wall that allows just enough distance from discomfort to be able to drive down a freeway comfortably. It is the kind of permeable wall that when someone makes a comment during a conversation that perhaps you can relate to, that permits a comfortable distance, a protective distance from which to consider each bit of input. And you can feel secure that each person's feedback to you will have to check in at your front gate before you decide to let it in or not, before you decide whether to react or not, and if you react, to decide how you will react based on what works and feels good at the deepest levels within yourself. So why not have a construction party and build a pretty wall and a creative wall? And I wonder what colors will you use? What materials you'll use? And what does the check-in gate look like? And how very much room is there for lots and lots of growth. And the walls can always be moved when you so desire. They can be built up or built down. You can put in peepholes and panoramic windows, after all. The walls are yours. And all I know is that the ability to walk into an open space has at one level unlimited freedom. But at another level, where's the structure to guide experience meaningfully? And I had a friend, when he moved into the particular office he's in now, it was a huge space. He had to draft a plan detailing how many walls he wanted and where he wanted them, how many outlets and how many doors. And did he want the doors opening in or opening out? How many on switches and how many off switches? And there's a part of you that knows very well that designing uses for space is a real art. And you discovered over time that each part of you, all the parts of you, have some space. And how you want to use that space is certainly a matter of individual design. And the aesthetics of a high wall here or a low wall there, more space for this part, less space for that part, a Dutch door, so two parts can share when they want, yet still have space marked off. You can really enjoy the incredible clarity 
that comes along with increasingly sophisticated designs. Movable and removable walls. And what a relief to know that nothing that you experience need necessarily flow right through all of you. Your design dictates where things go while they wait to be admitted. That you have lots of inner protection, walls of inner strength. And you've seen pictures of the Great Wall of China. You've perhaps heard of the Wailing Wall, and you've read about the Berlin Wall, which doesn't even exist anymore. And you know about Wall Street, and perhaps you've even heard of Wall Drug, South Dakota, and the Natural Wall of the Rocky Mountains, the sheer cliff walls of La Jolla, and with all the different possibilities your unconscious mind can, without any real effort on your part, it can plan and build. And perhaps, if you were a soldier on morning watch, you would really know the importance of reinforcing and enforcing and protecting the walls that separate inner from outer 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not any one part being overburdened. Isn't it interesting that a town with walls, residents can sleep at night knowing someone is on sentry for them. Because one must really protect one's boundaries to the extent that it helps growth. And there are a lot of deeper meanings that I really know you can absorb now and use a day at a time. And so take your time to process, to architect, to plan, to build, to begin the building, knowing that each and every wall is just an experiment that either helps or hinders and leads to a better design and a new wall. So when you feel like it, when you can feel that process starting, when you feel like you want to, and when you're ready to, you can reorient, knowing the work has begun, your eyes can open now.